Hello my friends, in today's video we will be comparing cameras on iPhone 14 Pro, 13 Pro and 12 Pro. The last two iPhone generations introduced very significant hardware upgrades in the camera department. In this video we will take a look at the developments of the iPhone cameras over the past two years and I will try to evaluate whether it is heading in the right direction. The first difference is visible even on the outside and that is the size of the camera bump. The size increase from 12 Pro to 13 Pro was very significant. From 13 Pro to 14 Pro not so much. When I look at them side by side now, it is actually the small camera setup on the iPhone 12 Pro that looks somewhat strange to me, so I guess that I was able to get used to it. Importantly, there is a good reason why the camera bump on 13 and 14 Pro is so much bigger iPhone 12 Pro uses a 1 over 2.55 inch sensor which was a standard for iPhones for many years. iPhone 13 Pro uses a much larger 1 over 1.65 inch sensor. Both of them are 12 megapixel. iPhone 14 Pro uses even larger 1 over 1.28 inch 48 megapixel sensor. So let's take a look at what that means in the real world. A significant difference is that the 14 Pro uses 24mm focal length, whereas the 13 and 12 Pro use 26mm. I prefer 24mm because it is a bit more immersive. I mostly shoot cityscapes and landscapes where it provides a bit more interesting angle. 26mm may be a bit more versatile, but zooming to about 26mm on 14 Pro is not an issue at all. Much like in the 14 Pro review, the main camera image quality segment needs to be split into RAW and JPEG part. If you shoot RAW, you will get very similar level of detail between 12 Pro and 13 Pro. 13 Pro should be a bit better due to the lower pixel density, but in reality there is very little difference. 14 Pro is a very different story. The difference between the RAWs on 14 Pro and 13 Pro or 12 Pro is huge. That is probably two or three classes worth of difference. That 48 megapixel mode in combination with very solid lens is the biggest strength of the 14 Pro. This is a fantastic level of detail that reaches deep into dedicated camera territory, but that is a story for another time. If we switch to JPEGs or HEIC though, the image quality on 14 Pro gets knocked down right back to the 12 Pro level. There is no extra detail whatsoever. As I have concluded in my 14 Pro review, the in-camera JPEG processing leaves a lot to be desired. You definitely need to shoot RAW on 14 Pro if you want to get anywhere near the full potential of the camera, which is a bit of a shame because most people won't do that. The ultrawide camera on all three uses a 13mm focal length and 12 megapixel sensor. The size of the sensor and the optics are very different though. To be honest, I don't really see much difference in the level of detail in the good light. Despite the upgrades, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. This time it applies to both RAWs and JPEGs. All three shoot very nice ultra-wide images though and I'm definitely not complaining. 13mm equivalent focal length is very dramatic and immersive which is in my opinion a good choice iPhone 13 and 14 Pro have a great semi-micro capabilities, which is a significant advantage over the 12 Pro and older iPhones. The telephoto lenses are very different though. The iPhone 12 Pro has a 50mm equivalent lens, which is technically not a telephoto. It uses a small 1 over 3.55 inch sensor, but the images are very solid iPhone 13 Pro switched to 77mm equivalent with a dark f2.8 aperture. In my opinion, it was a downgrade. It is by far the weakest camera on 13 Pro and the focal length isn't as useful as 50mm. 14 Pro fortunately combines the strengths of both telephoto cameras. Dedicated telephoto lens is still 77mm equivalent dark aperture lens probably carried over from 13 Pro. There is a lot more sharpening on the 13 Pro 3X camera, which doesn't look good, so I prefer 3X camera on 14 Pro. Fortunately, it is complemented by 50mm equivalent cropped images from the main camera. The image quality of the 2X zoom on 14 Pro is very similar to the dedicated 2X camera on 12 Pro, and it may actually be a little bit better. That means that we basically have both 2x and 3x options with better image quality, so I definitely can't complain. 
The low light is an area where the difference in the sensor size should make a difference. Not today though. The iPhone 12 Pro has a significantly smaller sensor, but it compensates for that by using longer exposure times in the night mode and by having a brighter f1.6 aperture. Even if you choose maximal exposure time on 13 and 14 Pro, it won't be as long as on the 12 Pro. Also, if you use night mode on 14 Pro, you will get 12 megapixel resolution even if you shoot RAW, which means that the hardware advantage is practically neutralized. I'm not necessarily complaining though. Nighttime images look really good on all three cameras. One big improvement on the 14 Pro is that those notorious light reflections are minimized probably by 95% in the stills. The colors and the processing on all three generations are very similar. You will get a different white balance here and there, but I can't say that I see any consistent changes. You will always get very nice colors on a sunny day. The colors are still highly saturated, but not too much. Overall, I am quite happy with the color accuracy. The HDR effect was somewhat toned down on 13 Pro and 14 Pro. That is mostly visible on days with overcast sky. All three will still overbrighten the shadows and they still have a lot of trouble with getting the white balance in the shadows right. In extreme situations such as this one, you will still get colors that are completely off, but these situations shouldn't be that common in the real world use. The HDR processing is in my opinion the biggest weakness of the iPhone photography. It is a very complex topic, but I don't think that it is headed in the right direction. I will talk more about that in upcoming comparison with a dedicated camera. On the other hand, Pro RAW is a part of computational photography that works. It basically puts together multiple images with different exposures to preserve the detail in both highlights and shadows. You can push the files as far as you want to without seeing any noise at all. You can recover a great amount of detail from both shadows and highlights. Apple has implemented the stacked RAW feature perfectly. It was introduced with 12 Pro and it is equally impressive with all three generations. It works basically the same, the only difference is that it unlocks the 48 megapixel resolution on the 14 Pro. Let's move on to the video. The conclusion is pretty much the same as with the JPEG stills. Basically the only difference that I can see is that the iPhone 12 Pro uses less sharpening than 13 and 14 Pro. I prefer less sharpening, so I actually slightly prefer the iPhone 12 Pro video. iPhone 14 Pro uses a simple 4 to 1 pixel binning for the video, so it acts like a 12 megapixel sensor. The good news is that the video quality is not worse than with 12 megapixel cameras, which is usually the case when manufacturer switches to higher resolution. The video quality on all three is still very solid by smartphone camera standards. They capture a nice amount of detail and the video in non-HDR situations looks quite natural, again by smartphone camera standards. Interestingly, the field of view on iPhone 14 Pro only seems to be a little bit wider. It is hardly noticeable. I'm not sure why, but that is a bit of a disappointment. The video processing seems to be even more similar than the stills processing. There is still a lot of sharpening and edit texture. You may also still encounter situations with infamous overexposed blue shadows. There are also very rare situations where the processing is completely clueless even with iPhone 14 Pro, but you realistically shouldn't encounter these situations too often. Regarding the video from ultrawide and telephoto cameras, the conclusion is basically the same as with the stills. The difference between the three generations is very minor. There are some differences in the low light video. 13 Pro and 14 Pro are noticeably better than 12 Pro. Apple won't let you see the noise, so they apply a ton of noise reduction, which means that you will see a lot more detail on 13 Pro and 14 Pro. Low light video on 14 Pro is a bit more detailed than on 13 Pro, but the difference is not that huge. The stabilization has been a huge strength of the iPhone since the 11 iPhone 13 Pro switched from lens stabilization to sensor stabilization, but it doesn't really make much difference since most of the work in video is done by the digital stabilization. The stabilization hasn't really improved since 12 Pro, but to be honest there wasn't much room for improvement. Considering that this is not an ultra-wide video, the walking is extremely smooth. It is also more than sufficient for any kind of static shots or for panning. 
The stabilization is really great on all three cameras on all generations. I have nothing but praises for the stabilization. iPhone photography is also indirectly affected by the display. All three generations use a 6.1 inch display with 460 pixels per inch and 120 Hz refresh rate. The most obvious difference is the notch which is smaller on the 13 Pro and replaced by Dynamic Island Cutout on 14 Pro. There is no Dynamic Island camera functionality though. A very important difference for photography is the brightness. 12 Pro goes up to 800 nits in SDR mode, 13 Pro up to 1000. 14 Pro can go up to 2000 nits outdoors. It may not look twice as bright as the 13 Pro, but it is definitely a lot brighter and easier to see. The display is also still a category where the iPhone absolutely destroys any dedicated camera. The battery life is pretty similar. All can get through a day of classic holiday photography and heavy use with no issues at all. The battery life on 14 Pro was a little bit worse with an always on display, but I actually turned it off. I would say that the battery life is still a strength of iPhones. To sum up, I was a little bit surprised by the results of my testing. Despite those very significant hardware differences between 12, 13 and 14 Pro, they produce very similar results in a lot of situations. 48 megapixel sensor in 14 Pro is by far the biggest advancement possibly in the whole history of iPhone photography. It puts the iPhone 14 Pro in a completely different league. The caveat is that you have to shoot RAW to get anywhere near the full potential of that 48 megapixel sensor. The in-camera JPEG processing will knock the quality right back to the 12 Pro level. The same applies to the video, but at least the quality didn't decrease like with some other high resolution smartphones. The stabilization and the ProRAW files have been a huge strength of iPhones throughout all three generations. The whole HDR or computational photography was supposed to be the next big thing. In reality, it just seems to be eliminating hardware advantages in 13 and 14 Pro. Don't get me wrong, all cameras on 14 Pro are still great overall. The only issue is that those 48 megapixel rows are so great that they make the other aspects of the camera seem somewhat limiting. It is just a start of a new chapter in iPhone photography and I think that the future of iPhone photography is very bright, there is just some work on the software side that needs to be done. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful, stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content, I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.